Question 2, part 8. So radium uh, core, right, it has a high melting point, which is 900 degrees C, and it's soluble in water. Okay, now predict the latest structure of the radium chloride based on the properties described. Uh, the melting point is quite high, about 900 degrees C. So we know that this one, it must be a giant structure. The latest structure means uh, giant or simple. Because this uh, is group 2 chloride, so it's giant ionic. Again, giant structure, we have uh, a few types. Giant molecular, giant metallic, and giant ionic. So because this compound is an ionic compound, so the structure is giant ionic. Draw the dots, dot cross structure or dot cross diagram for this radium chloride. Okay, so it's better for you to show both chloride. Okay, the dot cross you must uh, uh, at least use the uh, this dot and cross to uh, distinguish the electrons from which species. Okay, the radium is uh, uh, group 2. It has two valence electrons. So the electrons, these two electrons will donate to the chlorines to form chloride. So this is the electron. This is the electron from the radium. And the dot is the electrons on chlorine itself. So since the chlorine gains one electron from radium, so it's from chloride. So you put a negative charge here, square bracket negative charge. Radium donates two valence electron. Now uh, the valence shell, no electrons. You don't need to draw all the inner shell. It's too, it's too many shells there. And of course, another chloride you must show, right? So all must put the square bracket with charge. Radium is too positive. Okay, part C. Part C, uh, the general view is this. Uh, when down the group, calcium to the radium or magnesium to radium. So more electrons shall involve. Means when down the group, uh, more electrons shall with the elements. Okay, we know that size is larger. When size larger or more electron shell, it's going to have more shielding. And when there is more shielding, the nuclear charge to the valence electron is actually weaker. When the attractions of the nuclear is weaker, nucleus is weaker. So the electrons or valence electrons is going to release easier. Means it's easier for the group 2 to react with others and it's more reactive. Now, that's the main concept. Now, for this one, part C, eh? um, construct, uh, we will just go to part 1. right? So see what they want. Construct an equations for the reactions of radium and H2O. Okay, radium similar with barium or strontium so it will react with water and form hydroxide and it release h2 gas uh, in this question you know not really need to put the stack symbol but i just put the stack symbol for you to refer radium is a solid reacts with h2o liquid form radium hydroxide because this one is soluble we put aqueous and it's from H2 gas. Part 2. Identify which elements radium or calcium reacts with water at faster rate. Okay, suggest how the observation of each reaction would differ. Okay, so just now I already told you the reactivities increases down the group. Means radium is going to react with water easier and faster. So answer must be radium. And what you can see means what is the observations that can make the difference. Okay, if radium is more reactive, it will form the gas faster, right? So that's why it will form more bubbles per unit time. 
so we can see it's more vigorous more bubbles form from there or you can actually uh, mention the solid disappear faster means it's dissolved faster it's happened at the same time okay part three suggest why these reactions occur at different rates uh, this is what i told you just now the 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 explanation okay this may due to different ionization energy of the elements because uh, the <coughs> The elements uh, or the group crew elements, they will release their electrons while reacting with others. So that's why uh, it's involved uh, this uh, so-called ionization energy. But ionization energy uh, actually should use in other place, but it's okay. okay. Somehow the elements still release two electrons and form compounds with others. Okay, so this is what you need to really explain when down the group there will be more electron shell and therefore more shielding when shielding is greater then it will lower the nuclear attractions to the valence electron then it's easier for it to release electron and it has a faster rate okay part four one of the solution is cloudy when reaction has finished. At the end of each reaction, universal indicators added to each reaction mixture suggest pH values for both reactions. Uh, it's actually asking uh, the reactions of the calcium and the radium uh, with the water. So pH of the solution made from calcium should be around 12. You can put 11. Uh, as long as it's lower than uh, 13, 14, right? Because uh, the calcium hydroxide is uh, partially soluble, it's from lesser hydroxide. Okay, the pH of the solutions made from the radium means the radium hydroxide is pH 14. You can put 13, 14, 14 is better, uh, it's a strong base. Okay, so we know the difference now. The calcium hydroxide solution has a lower pH which is around 12 and the radium hydroxide solution is has the higher pH which is around 14 okay down the group we know that solubility of group 2 hydroxide increases means calcium hydroxide is less soluble compared to radium hydroxide radium hydroxide is kind of like uh, almost dissolves okay when it's dissolved then it will give more hydroxide in the solution means the concentration of hydroxide will be greater in the radium hydroxide solution that's why pH is higher <clears throat> a sample of aqueous uh, calcium halides okay so it contains chloride either chloride bromide iodide so describe two-step process you could use to identify the halides very easy standard method is always silver nitrate after that add ammonia solution okay to test the halides so these are the standard observations that you should know for each of the halides for the chloride you get what precipitate with the silver nitrate the bromide you get cream precipitate with this silver nitrate for the iodide, you get yellow precipitate. White precipitate is AgCl, cream precipitate is AgBr, and the yellow precipitate is AgI. Okay, second step, when we add ammonia to this solution, so the white precipitate dissolves. So it will dissolve, okay, and it's form a clear solution, right? This one is for the silver chloride with ammonia. So for the <coughs> This uh, bromide, silver bromide, the precipitate partially soluble in the dilute ammonia solution. Or you can say it's soluble in the uh, concentrated ammonia. But if let's say you put the method, uh, the dilute, let's say here you put dilute uh, ammonia, so you better put partially soluble or partly soluble uh, in this ammonia solution. 
and for the silver iodide here, the yellow precipitate insoluble. Okay, that's all. Thank you.